Good evening everyone and we are going to be taking a look at the more or less finalised artillery setup for the What If 172nd Malagasy Expeditionary Force. But before we do that we just need to cover a few little bits. Now firstly a trigger warning. I am going to be talking about injuries. Um, if anyone does suffer from PTSD or um, has seen battlefield injuries just be warned um, thankfully I only have uh, have to deal with less severe trauma yellow trauma is trauma um, but I know that artillery has a very horrific effect so just be aware of that so in terms of expeditionary artillery this is part three thank you so much for your kind feedback and a really good insight from India on a badly uh, known or poorly known conflict here in the West. Um, great insight and again just shows the impact of artillery on the battlefield. So if we think of war as a continuation of politics by other means, as said by Clausewitz, and the objective is to disarm your enemy and compel them to do your will, artillery is one of the key ways of doing that without having to close in into infantry or tank combat and a very attritional form of warfare which can result in high casualties for the attacker and the defender. So artillery is a very useful tool for maximising the effect of your force and negating the impact of the enemy's force to achieve your objective and to disarm them. Now, artillery works on many levels, and the way it works to disarm the enemy is it breaks morale, it breaks positions, it breaks things like the human body, and this is why I gave a trigger warning. The effects of artillery are devastating on the human body. You can go back to pictures from the American Civil War. And you can see some of the horrific injuries caused by cannonballs and shot. Now, those injuries continue to this day. And a lot of the trauma that people are seeing and dealing with in Ukraine uh, is just a reminder of how devastating artillery is. Now, thankfully, I don't deal with trauma on that level. Um, but again, if you have dealt with victims of blasts, you will know how horrific how horrific just the blasts are from artillery and bear in mind that artillery when it when the explosion and explosive force goes off will collapse lungs and cause traumatic brain injuries as well so it has hidden side effects it also breaks the mind and if you go back to world war one uh, you will have the onset of what was called shell shock um, and that is continuing to this day in ukraine um, and you can see how artillery breaks bodies and minds. It also breaks tanks. Again, we can see that in Ukraine where the artillery has broken up Russian and Ukrainian tank formations and caused absolute devastation. It breaks infrastructure. And here I'm talking about things which relate to military infrastructure because otherwise it would be a war crime. And by doing all of this, it breaks the will of the enemy disarming them and compelling them to do your will. So artillery is directly tied into Clausewitz's theory on war, which makes sense because he put that together from learning about the Russian campaign. Now, the job of the expeditionary force, as with any military force, and this is a one in 70 second what if military force, but the job is to find the enemy, fix or pin down the enemy and then destroy the enemy. Now artillery is well equipped to do this, the artillery arm of any force, because it ties into the intel side of the military, ties into the infantry, it ties into the engineers, it ties into the uh, armour or the cavalry, it ties into air power. Artillery has to know where the friendly forces are to avoid fratricide. So the artillery systems and the artillery control network is extremely well equipped to have a good view of the battlefield. And if you know where your forces are, then that's a good way of finding out where the enemy is.
Now artillery is well set up to do this by radar, counter battery radars or target acquisition radars, by observers specially trained and those in other arms and electronic means such as electronic intelligence. So it's really well equipped to find the enemy and because of the counter battery role it has to be very good at it. So artillery is a great arm to work with um, intelligence formations and the other formations to find where the enemy is. Artillery is then used very strongly to fix the enemy. Now it does this either by pinning them down, by suppressing them so they can't move, by blocking uh, routes in and out from their positions, by destroying things or routes or bridges, or by mining um, them using remote mining methods. And then finally, artillery is used to destroy the enemy, either partially or totally. And we're seeing whole villages and towns destroyed in the war in Ukraine by artillery. Now let's go and look at the mix. So this is the mix I've prepared for my 1 in 70 second What If uh, Malagasy uh, battle group. It's an expeditionary formation, so I've taken out some of the heavy tanks like the Merkava, some of the heavy APCs like the Axarit and the um, Neymar, and those companies of infantry will be rolled into light roll companies. Now, uh, I've also realised that divesting the C-17 fleet, as planned, was stupid, and Kinetic are bringing out a kit, hopefully this year, of the C-17 and 1 in 72nd, so at the 11th hour, the deal was scrapped and that allows me to bring uh, the G6s along, no problem, to anywhere the Malagasy forces need to deploy. Now, I should say that this formation is designed to give the Expeditionary Force Commander options. So he may choose, or she uh, may choose, to leave behind some of these options, depending on the mission requirement and the mix of forces. At other times, they may push forward some of the lighter pieces, follow up with the medium pieces, and then follow up with heavier pieces. So it's a flexible system. Now, this represents uh, one third of what would be committed to the Malagasy Expeditionary Force. I've modelled a third. I tend to model a third of everything. I just like doing it that way. And here I've got a third of the end users. Uh, from the expeditionary force on display. So we've got infantry represented here. We've got the cavalry or screening forces represented here. We've got reconnaissance forces represented here. I mean, I'm doing away with the ERC uh, 90s and using foxhounds because they're very portable. And unlike the ERC, they have a V-shaped hole. Uh, this is a badges printed models and uh, that is IED proofed, unlike the ERC. So for, for what I need it to do, this is uh, perfect. Um, then we have the artillery observation units here with the Fenix. So let's make a start. So artillery, of course, you can have planned artillery, you can have um, reactive artillery. Now, at the very tip, if you like, of going forwards, you've got um, drone formations, uh, so re recce formations looking ahead. Now, everything on this part of the table here, up to about here, including these ambulances, is portable by the CH-47 or the Rotodyne. So this is the rapid response side of the table. Now, this tight side of the table is what you would commit if you were going to uh, take an airfield or seize a bridgehead, something like that. Now, the next tranche of the table, um, going from these VAB mortars here, the uh, forces here, coming back to the larger drone troop and working across the ray from Coyotes, counter-battery radar and... Uh, the command post for the artillery, engineering support and the M110A2s and HIMARS here. And then this is your, like, your divisional pieces, which you can bring, but they are allocated on need. Um, these are your 
A400 M areas. Now, the next layer is the C17A layer, and this requires the Globe Master for rapid deployment. But in theatre, the G6 Rhino battery has incredible mobility because it's a wheeled artillery piece designed for long road marches over harsh conditions with IED protection. And this is an S and S models piece, and then I've got some uh, of the later models, which are uh, Butler's printed models. Really good, really, really good. So there's lots of flexibility within this. And in terms of then what the battle group would actually use on a day-to-day -day basis, it's everything from here forwards and then allocated at the regimental level uh, would be pieces like the M one one o a two, which I've modernised. Your M two seventy multiple launch or guided multiple launch rocket system, and your M one four two. These are the unarmoured cab version. Your high Mars. This next level is the regimental level. So these are your pieces, which sorry the divisional level. So these are your pieces which would be used. Uh, for overall protection of the forces like the Patriots, and I'm only brought out a few of them just to show you. Uh, Centurion C Rams, a laser anti drone um, piece from Badgers, uh, more specific countermeasures pieces, the Penguinator, the uh, Salty Sea Guard Dog, and the Iron Dome to protect all of this lot. So, this is if you like what is allocated at the highest level the next level down and then your day-to-day -day stuff which is under the battle group or brigade combat team uh, commander's remit now in terms of finding the enemy that's what these drone troops do and that's what the observers do and for the observation role the uh, foxhounds here have a nice uh, laser targeting uh, system there, uh, very effective, and that's what they use to convey uh, coordinates and fire missions back to the fire direction centre, which then transmits it and sends it out to the batteries to then deliver the fire onto the objective. Now, the role of the observers and the observers in the Fennec, which will include your artillery observers, is crucial because they give the ability to find the enemy and the Fennec is perfect for this role. It's small, it's light, it's mobile and it's quiet. And they use their sensors which are on board such as this uh, ranging and night vision, uh, very good sensor on there to then convey back those coordinates to the uh, fire direction center. It's all done digitally. It's all done by uh, the signals team, which is here, who set up the nodes, who set up the nets. Uh, none of this is secret. This is all of, uh, easily available. What is secret is actually how the nuts and bolts of this work. And I'm not in the military, so I don't know that, but this is um, the, the theory behind it. So. Once you've got your radio nodes, your comms net set up, your digital secure communication systems, uh, you can have this communication at all levels, going forwards and backwards, and then sideways to the batteries. And then if you've got a target which needs more uh, impact or specific impact, that's where you then work up to the regimental level for the regimental pieces. Now, the, the regimental pieces I've, I've got here give the commander options. And like I said at the start, the commander may choose to bring some of these or leave them. Now, we'll come on to these uh, later, but they all give you different things. So the M270 gives you a double uh, launch capacity, two boxes of um, guided multiple launch rockets or... MLRS rockets. It is armoured and it weighs more than the HIMARS and this is a, a non-armoured cab version. Just a single box of six rockets. But this gives you the ability to transport it in a Hercules 
whereas this needs a A400M or a Globemaster. The uh, M110A2, whilst it is outranged considerably by the G6, which is a fantastic weapon, this gives you the option for extremely heavy hitting shells. Now I've modernised this with a muzzle reference device, a GPS box on the top there. This is a Badger's 3D printed one. Uh, a laptop there for the um, digital fire control system and a drone screen to prevent pesky pooping drones from dropping on it. Uh, this one has the same thing, but a bit more elaborate. Uh, drone screen not going to stop a lancet but it will stop a pooping drone or at least take the blast and then the personal protective equipment can do its job so these give you options this is extremely heavy hitting uh, shell um, even though its shell is only a small bit uh, bigger than the uh, g6 rhinos 155 shell the 203 millimeter shell packs a considerable uh, higher punch now the uh, HIMARS and the GMLRS give you an uh, extremely long range. We're talking of 80 to 100 kilometers, depending on the type of weapon. Very precise. You can see what they're up to in Ukraine. Fantastically mobile system, all digitally interlinked and very effective. The G6, which is your staple of the um, artillery arm, is extremely long ranged 155 millimeter piece um, as you can see here this is uh, my battery like i said there'd be three of these per um, expeditionary force and this has got the uh, caspier with the mine roller to take the convoy safely these are all very protected against mines we've got uh, bless uh, bless buck um, ammunition carriers Again, mine protected, perfect for the African theatre, um, a protected ambulance and protected command vehicle based on the box, so that's badges. Um, and an MATV just for security. So this is your bread and butter artillery. Now the commander may want to bring um, the light guns, the 105mm light guns. And these are air mobile including the BVS 410 um, and the Pinsgowers here. These are SNS model uh, Pinsgower. The light guns are Butlers and the old Airfix. Um, and this gives you extremely mobile artillery. Now you may think, well, why do we need so many calibers? Well, uh, the reason you need so many calibers is because, and now we're moving on to... Uh, fixing the enemy is if you are moving forwards uh, and you are attacking a position or defending a position you've got this range of calibers because you can work closer to an enemy position and the 105 millimeter round can work closer to your position than the 155 can and certainly the the mlrs um, and not so much the gmlrs but the uh, m11 OA2. So if you want to do a planned attack on a position, you may use um, GMLRS to take out some of the enemy's artillery. You may use um, the uh, G6 Rhino um, counter battery or uh, initial fire to break up the enemy's position. And then as you get closer, you might be using the 105mm light guns for suppressive fire, not destructive fire. Um, so there's lots that you can do with artillery in terms of fixing it. Now, the other thing um, in terms of find and fix is the drone units here. And this is one that's completely air portable. And this is one which requires like an A400M. But these are used to um, find the enemy. Um, they can be used to attack the enemy uh, on their own merit with the uh, weapons that they have. And this is a pooping drone. Um, it poops bombs onto people. These are like your FPV uh, crash into thing drones. Um, but you've got that range of options and then you've got the smaller UAVs and it's all feeding back into this fire direction uh, center and the mobile command posts if you're working uh, air portable. And um, 
you will then have the range of options to hit uh, the enemy. Likewise, if you end up in a situation where you ambushed or you come across the enemy very quickly, the infantry can call in artillery fire missions, the screening forces can call them in, and again, they've got those special sites to do so. And notice the drone screens going on. Now, that's all well and good, and uh, that's a very uh, good way of delivering fire. Um, so you've got the ability to find here um, and to fire the artillery to fix and then destroy. The other thing that you've got, and these are air portable, is counter battery systems. And this is the Elta MMR uh, micro uh, radar. And you'll see these dotted around because these are multiple purpose radars. Now this could be transported by a Chinook um, or a truck. Very light, very portable. And then you've got a tie-in to the air defence network. Now air defence is very important and it really does fit into the artillery battle. So here we've got the NASAMS battery um, with some of the close-in repping systems. Again, an Alta radar. And then as we work back, you'll see more Alta radars. For example, here with the Iron Dome system, you've got a radar here. You've got radar um, radars on the drones to find the enemy. You've got radars here on the close in air defense vehicles. You've got radars here from the fire direction center. So really good use of technology to find the enemy and fix their positions and then call in the appropriate destructive method. Now, air defense is so important and why it fits into the artillery battle is because these are key assets that the enemy will want to destroy. In the African theater, that might be via simple uh, drones, although you can never exclude um, sort of nefarious state actors providing better drones. So that's where protecting the artillery, even at the light level, uh, using rare from coyotes, um, and then your key assets, as we move further back, using CRAMs, close in weapon stations and Patriot Pack 3 or Pack 2 launchers and your Iron Dome becomes more important because everything will be directed against your artillery because it is a battle winner. If these units from the very light ones to the very heavy ones remain intact, you will have escalation dominance and you'll be able to break your enemy's will. So I've included some of the engineering assets into this because you need to dig revetments, you need to dig hides, you need to clear the routes um, where the artillery is going to be working in the firing areas with things like mine rollers. Um, so I've included them in here just to give you an idea. Now again, even pieces like this M9 Ace is extremely portable at 16 tonnes. Uh, so is the high mobility as per the title uh, excavator. So these are great pieces to have and they tie right in with the artillery. Now let's have a look at some of the new mortar systems as well. Now uh, one of the uh, viewers has asked about the Patricia mortar system. Now mortars do fit into the artillery um, the way I've structured it but they, they also fit into the infantry and uh, screening force battle. Now, Many forces put the mortars with the infantry. I group them into artillery. Um, we've got light air portable, Chinook portable ones here with a Dingo 1 ATF, uh, the 120 millimeter French mortar. And then we've got slightly heavier ones, but portable by the A uh, 400M and the Hercules. And these are the equivalent of the Patricia. This is the Fab 2R2M. This is an automatic mortar system. So compared to one of these mortar systems, which can fire pretty quickly, like boom, and then you have to reload and being a heavier shell, it's slower than the 81 millimeter mortar. The automatic systems like the Patricia and the 2R2M is boof, boof, boof. And these are heavy shells, 120 millimeters. So we've got three of these 120 millimeters and then we've got the um, 
the sort of manual ones, but extremely portable, very good for mountains, very good for seizing airfields and defending them. We've got the light guns, which are really rapid firing. The G6, which is your 155mm bread and butter, for extremely long range. And then we've got your regimental assets. You've got the uh, various multiple launch rocket systems. And if you really need to destroy a hardened position, you can use the M110s. Now the M110 is more portable than the G6, but has a lower range. So again, the, the reason I've included these pieces is to give the commander options and to be as flexible as possible. So I hope that makes sense. And everything is covered from the top to the bottom via uh, air defense systems, such as the anti-drone rare from Coyotes, such as the Stinger and gun system, the NASAMs, your medium range, working back to your Patriots, your long range, and your Iron Dome protecting your communications nodes and your key assets like the fire direction control center. So I hope that helps and I hope that helps answer the question. And what I've tried to do is think about, okay, finding the enemy using new technology, finding the enemy using radars, electronic warfare. This is your electronic warfare uh, unit, which is containerized. Again, you can take this on a truck or on a Chinook. Um, fixing the enemy, suppressing the enemy, harassing them, destroying them at the lowest level, all the way up to the highest level. So I hope that helps. I'll just give you a quick helicopter overview and let me know uh, what you think. So this is the uh, Malagasy Expeditionary Otif, one third of the Expeditionary Artillery. Three of this little lot per expeditionary force. Let me know what you think. Take care. Bye.